Welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're gonna use these tarot cards to do a why didn't they work check on Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman. I actually came up with this one on my own. Okay, so when I say that this video was my idea, uh, I mean kind of, like the idea came to me today, but I have so many lists for this channel of suggested topics that I seem to recall this topic was on a list suggested by one of the subscribers. So credit to them and credit to me. So Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman met on the set of Gattaca in 1996. They married in 1998 and they filed for divorce in 2003. And the divorce was finalized in 2005. So we're talking about maybe four or five happy years of marriage, like maybe. So I definitely think of them as the quintessential 90s couple. Like he was this like hot young actor who'd been around for a while since he was, you know, a kid or an adolescent. She was a model who was, you know, heading into acting. She had already been married. So let's not forget that Uma Thurman had been married to that guy, that guy that everyone likes. Uh, another actor, Gary Oldman, and she was married to him for two years, from 1990 to 1992. So then she had a nice six years of being single until Ethan, well, not six years, then she had a nice four years of being single until Ethan came along. On the one hand, we very much know why Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman did not work out. And the name of that is Ryan Shaw Hughes, who was their nanny at the time. Okay, and one thing I'd like to note is that Ryan Shaw Hughes is shorter than Uma Thurman, and I think that's a significant point. Okay, so Ethan Hawke is 5'10", maybe. So whenever you read a celebrity's official height, it could be that height or it could be an inch shorter. So he's somewhere between 5'9 and 5'10". Uma Thurman is 5'10 or 5'11", okay? Meaning in heels, she towers over him. We can all agree on that. Ryan Shaw Hughes, the nanny, let's just call her the nanny. The nanny is like 5'5". Five five. What does this mean? When this young woman was in his home helping take care of his kids and made him feel like a big strong man. Like these things, these are hitting us on a very primitive, very carnal, very caveman-like level. And they do have an influence as we can clearly see. So let's take a look at the astrology before we start playing cards on these two crazy kids. As a note in the 90s when my sister was an obnoxious teenager, she ran into Uma Thurman um, and she said several things. She was like, Uma Thurman was pushing a stroller and she's like, that had Ethan Hawke's baby in it. And I was like, okay, okay. I mean, presumably, they, at that point they had just had one kid. And that's another thing to note about Ethan Hawke. He's had two kids with Uma and two kids with the nanny, who's no longer the nanny, Ryan Shaw Hughes. I should just call her by her name. So my sister was like, I saw Uma Thurman today. And she said that Uma was jogging with the stroller and that she had like a face full of acne. That's what she said. I was like, oh, that's gross. Especially in New York, I think it was the summertime, it was like gross and gritty in the summertime. Anyway, so before we start pulling some cards for these people, one thing we should note, Ethan Hawke is a Scorpio with a Taurus moon. Uma Thurman is a Taurus, moon in Aquarius, Virgo rising. So the reason that this is significant is just on a sun sign level, these two are a hit or miss couple. Scorpio, Taurus, can totally work. We have the elementals there. Yes, we have water and earth. They have many shared values and they value many qualities that the other possesses. But because they're in an opposition in the sky on the wheel of the zodiac, there can be conflict and tension just inherently. You know, it's the mirror's reflection, Taurus, Scorpio. So there can be a push-pull dynamic that can sometimes create, you know, conflict, drama, issues, frustrations just simply by the fact that this is an opposition. Now, starting with Ethan, I can't believe we don't know his rising sign. This is crazy, he's a major celebrity. But here's what's interesting. He has a stellium in Scorpio. So he's got four jet engines there. He's got Mercury, Venus, the Sun, and Jupiter all just hanging out in Scorpio. So that means that, you know, that's a lot of conflict. That's like he's got four AK-47s that's staring down Uma Thurman's Sun in Taurus. So that to me would increase the potential for conflict. He was also born during a, a Mars-Uranus conjunction in Libra. I don't really know what to make of that because we don't know his rising sign, we don't know what house that is for him, but I'd imagine when he gets angry, he, he could probably be quite sudden and truculent, 
or maybe not with all that Scorpio energy because we are like slow strategic snipers in the grass. Hard to say. But what is also very interesting is that he was born during a Saturn retrograde and he was also born during a, a Venus retrograde and Saturn is in a direct opposition to his Venus. So he's got Saturn in, in Taurus directly opposing uh, a Venus also in retrograde. And there's several other planets within the realm of engagement with that opposition. We don't really know what this means. We don't know what house this is. We don't know what area arenas of life this is showing up for him. This could speak to the, the do-overs in marriage, you know, with these retrograding forces, with a malefic hitting uh, his Venus, which just encapsulates love and relationships. That, that could be what that means. Okay, let's take a look at Uma. So Uma is a Taurus. She's got a Virgo rising moon in Aquarius. So earth heavy chart, yeah. What's very interesting about her is that she has Venus and Gemini in the 10th house. So Venus, the planet of love, abundance, relationships, sex, children, but also beauty, is in the 10th house of public achievements. So that's great that she has a benefic in her 10th house. We've seen that and it manifested for her first as beauty as a model and then being a beautiful actress. But, you know, Venus doesn't really like being in Gemini. It's not its favorite place. It's, you know, this sort of like analytical place of Gemini. What's also interesting is that Mars is there also in her 10th house, which I just thought was significant because like, you know, all the Kill Bill movies that she did later on in her career, you know, we have a warlord also present in that house for her. So interesting that that's there. What's also interesting is that if she's a Virgo rising, that means that her seventh house of committed relationships is in Pisces. The ruler for that is Jupiter. Her Jupiter is in retrograde and it's pretty much at a critical degree. It's at zero degrees about to change signs from Scorpio to Libra. So that suggests to me quite clearly do-overs in relationships, do-over in committed relationships. And she's had two marriages that didn't really work out. So that kind of checks out to me with that Jupiter in retrograde. We can't really say the same thing about Ethan Hawke because we don't know his rising sign. We don't know who the ruler of his seventh house is. We're kind of flying blind here. What's also interesting about Uma Thurman is that the ruler of her 10th house, so her 10th house being Gemini, the ruler of that is Mercury. It's in retrograde in the ninth house and it's headed dead towards a, male a malefic. So Mercury's in retrograde and it's headed towards Saturn at 11 degrees. So that does make me wonder if like the, the quiet that we've seen in this next chapter of her career is just kind of going to stay that way for a while. Like it was kind of like, I, I do wonder if this means her, this is the stage of her career where it just kind of flatlines. Like we saw her do like, you know, the hot chick roles earlier in her career, the beautiful roles. And then she moved on to be an assassin as like a second chapter. And now I'm wondering is like, what's next, if anything? because that Mercury would suggest that there would either be like maybe loss or grief or delays in her career or could represent a new degree of seriousness um, and structure and restructuring in her career later on in life. So these are just ideas. As a note, Ryan Shaw Hughes, the nanny, I know I said I wasn't gonna say that again, but here we are. She's a Leo, so I wasn't able to find her chart online. So Leo Scorpio, not a, a classic combination. I mean, we have Bill and Hillary who are a Leo Scorpio couple. But what this would suggest to me is that like Ryan Shaw Hughes must, must have a lot of very powerful sinistry aspects with Ethan Hawke that, they were, that they've been together for so long. So there's a lot about either of their charts that we don't know. You know, we only have a partial picture here. Okay. All right. So Uma, Ethan, Uma, Ethan, helping or hurting the situation. And what was the bottom line about why these two didn't work? Okay. Okay. So Uma's external vibe towards Ethan. Okay. So pretty clear. Not pleased. So nine of cups in reverse. So upright, this is a very, you know, simple card. It's contentment, satisfaction. I got what I wanted and I'm so happy. Um, it can be a card of just like, oh, I got what I want because you gave it to me. Um, or I, it can be, I got what I want because I earned it or I chose it or I asked for it. But in reverse, you know, this is not great. So it can be all the love and affection dumping out of a situation. It can be like, oh, I'm not quite pleased or it can just be like, oh, I got what I want, but it's not the way I pictured it. So there's clear discontent here, okay. Ethan's external vibe towards Uma. 
Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Interesting. So my first instinct with this card, Three of Pentacles, I was like, oh, it's, it's counseling. This comes up a lot for these couples, the Three of Pentacles. This is a classic card for like marriage counseling, marriage therapy, working on it, working on your coupling skills. But they did have a nanny, you know, and I'm wondering if this is the guide's way of presenting this. Because here's the thing. This is like younger Jedi, and then we have the two older Jedis of the church. And everyone's working together with their skill set. So, look. Nanny on the mind, for sure. We could also interpret this as just him saying like, hey, let's just work on making this work with our kids. And um, co-parenting and making the structure of this family work. So, not very lovey-dovey. And the threes give me pause, especially since, you know, this one person is so much shorter than everyone else in the picture. Okay. Um, Uma's internal vibe towards Ethan. I mean, here we are. We always say this isn't a great card to get when you're, we're doing these relationship spreads. So we got the six of cups upright. So pretty clear. This is like compassion, but in a siblings type of vibe. This is the like, I get it. I've walked in your shoes. I've been there. So no vitriol, but also this is not a lovey-dovey card. This comes up for brothers, sisters, relationships that have flamed out. Like, the, enough said, enough said. Okay, it's it's very much a card of like, oh, I care for you like a sibling. I care for you like a friend. Okay. Ethan's internal vibe towards Uma. Hmm. Okay. Wheel of Fortune in reverse. So this can mean one of two things. Like he's making a choice. So on some level, subconsciously, consciously, he had made a choice like this marriage is over, this is not working, da da da. Or he may have been feeling like also this wasn't meant to be. Sometimes this can come up in people's internal dialogue of like, this isn't supposed, we're not supposed to be together. This isn't right. This isn't like the plan of the universe. That That's also what this can mean. So very telling, very telling. All right. What was helping or hurting the situation? Oh, interesting. So we do get this card at times. I mean, we do get this card. So the chariot. So that they have two kids together. We got to move forward, onwards. You know, we have plenty of money to stay together. You know, we love each other. Was this a helping card or a hurting card? The chariot is about full speed ahead. It's about momentum. So was this helping or hurting this situation? Hard to say, was it momentum towards divorce or was it momentum towards an obligation of staying together? What this card suggests is that they were on the same page with the divorce and that there was maybe a shared vision of not moving forward and that there was agreements and momentum towards not moving forward. Okay, and what was the bottom line about why these two didn't work? Hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice blunt way of putting it. So five of wands, so there was just too much controversy, like it was just too much, this is like more heat than light, more, too many cooks in the kitchen. They didn't see eye to eye on things. They didn't have enough of a shared vision of the future. Like having, being like, oh, I want kids and a family and I want to make movies. That's not enough to sustain a marriage, you know, unfortunately. And they just didn't have enough compatibility or like simpatico is what this card is suggesting. So very interesting. So that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. If you know how Ethan and the nanny got together, I don't think it was like the ugly gross scandal like when Stefani had. I think like Ethan and Uma divorced and then they got together, but I'm gonna check on this. All right, so let me know your thoughts. Like and subscribe and as always, we'll do this again.